Welcome to your Around the Peninsula. I'm Army Sergeant Matt Cromer. How would you react if you look at your next paycheck and realize you're short a few hundred dollars? Senior Airman Sarah Bryce explains what happened to employees at Yongsong, Korea. There's a lot of moving pieces that go into making our military strong. Mainly, it's the people who build us into what we are now. One group not often talked about that helps support our troops is our civilian employees. I've been a GS for about three years now. Uh, for the last year, six, seven years, I guess. With increasing budget cuts, the overseas post allowance was taken away from Department of Defense employees. The post allowance is similar to the military's cost of living allowance, and when it disappeared, there were some negative consequences. I lost approximately $400 a month from a post allowance. You, you can tell when you look at your paycheck, I'm missing something here. Bills still have to be paid, food still have to be goes on the table. The payments could range from $100 to more than $500 a month. That could mean the difference between $6,000 a year and nothing. And that's a big gap if you have a family to support. Uh, that would be the understatement of the day, yes. I got my wife and my son. I'm paying for a daughter's college fund. I'm paying for uh, you know, a number of different things, paying off my bills. Now, the post allowance has been reinstated, but the pay rate isn't permanent. DOD employees need to fill out a survey to help decide what the new allowance rate will be. Survey came out, I immediately did the survey right off the bat. There's strength in numbers when it comes to things such as a survey. Take the survey. Do not fail to take that survey. It's very important for all of us. So if you're a civilian employee or you know somebody who is, let them know about the survey. You can find it by following the link on the USFK homepage. Senior Airman Sarah Bryce, Yongsong, Korea. The survey ends on June 30th. Anybody who has taken martial arts knows that it takes a great deal of discipline and dedication to perfect any art form. Katusa Private Jang Yun Chan introduces us to a student who is perfecting more than just the art form. Students of the United Forces Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class, or BJJ, are preparing for an upcoming tournament. For one student, his focus is not only on winning the gold, but also on getting fit. I lost my shape, but I was in a, about 230 pounds. When I came over here, as a personal goal, I wanted to be, get, be in better shape. So I was looking for something to do. The weight loss was something that came with it. It was not what I was looking to do. I, I lost, so far I have 40 pounds from 220 when I started. I'm in 120, 178 at this, this moment. As Solis gets ready for his tournament, there's a fan in his corner that means everything to him. He's losing weight in a healthy way, and I like that. I help him with the diet and his eating habits. So as long as he's doing it in a healthy way, I don't have any objections. I'm happy with it. The support he got from his biggest fan on game day might have been a bit too strong. She told me just to get on the mat and beat him up. That's what I was trying to do. I just went a little over the board on the second match, and unfortunately, you know, they DQ me. Despite being disqualified at the tournament, Solis also uses jiu-jitsu to embody the meaning of kachigapshida. We would like to have more people to join the team, more people to show um, the Korea Peninsula that the U.S. forces can do a lot, not only for the Army, but for the sport. As Solis continues to sharpen his skills, he has one last message for his future opponents. Yeah, I'm going to crush him. <laughs> Katsuza Private Chang Yun Chan, Seoul, Korea. Salas is working hard to sharpen his skills as he prepares for the upcoming tournaments. Flying two times the speed of sound, you're bound to chip some paint along the way. Staff Sergeant Chris Bevins takes us to Kunsan Air Base to see how an F-16 gets a new look. Much like a car gets a paint job in order to keep it structurally sound, aircraft need the same TLC. And the men of the 8th Maintenance Squadron Corrosion Control Facility are giving this F-16 a makeover. We, uh, we start by sanding all the old top coat off and feathering out any damage that's on the aircraft. Then we move on to spraying it with primer so that the new paint will adhere to the old paint and bare metal. And then we come along and finish with a top coat. There's uh, two different color top coats that we have. Um, we spray one, then spray the other, and then finish out with stencils. The most feared enemy of the F-16 is corrosion and decay, but these guys are keeping the enemy at bay with their renovated facility. Well, the facility just under, underwent a couple of renovations, and one of them was the filtration system. They upgraded the filtration system so that it has a, it, it 
filters out more of the chemicals, so that it's the, the environmental factor um, is reduced. With this being the first jet painted here in over six years, the hard work of everyone involved isn't going unnoticed. I, I'm very proud of my team. Uh, they've done uh, an enormous job here. Uh, they did it all themselves. They took the initiative. Uh, it's been a long time coming. A lot of hands have played a part to get this facility back online so that these individuals could actually do their craft. And when they're able to do their craft, it comes with a feeling of accomplishment. I mean, it, it, it really is a sense of pride of ownership just due to the fact that we, you know, whenever we see this jet, we'll know we're the ones that actually painted this. We're the ones that made it look how it does. Staff Sergeant Chris Bevins, Kunsan Air Base, Korea. Corrosion Control Facility finished the job in half the time. How can you show kids what their parents are going through in the military? Air Force Staff Sergeant Justin Wayne takes us to Osan Air Base, where one camp is showing kids exactly that. Physical training, face. facing movements, and hand-to-hand -hand combat are things that service members can learn in the military. Children were able to learn some of what service members go through with a boot camp just for them. This camp is being held to integrate uh, youths into a basic understanding of discipline and motivation. They're having us do exercises. They're teaching us the um, concepts and like about face and right face and stuff. I'm not sure what that what that's called, but it's being it's fun. This allows kids thinking of joining the military to know what they're getting into. I'll know about everything that's going to happen so I won't get yelled at like all the other random people who just got there and I'll be prepared for that stuff. Boot camp NCIC, Sergeant Justin Spawnhorse, explains how the kids have done being out under the sun. They've been able to adapt well and overcome. You know, we're out here, it's, it's hot today. So in this heat, you know, being at the age that they are, understanding the the health aspects of hydration, you know, a good diet, being overall healthy, is, it's good. It's, it teaches them, you know, you can't just sit around all summer in the house in the AC. 20 kids participated in the boot camp at Osan Air Base. Air Force Staff Sergeant Justin Wayne, Osan Air Base, Korea. This is the second year Osan has hosted a boot camp for kids. Volleyball has many benefits. One in particular can actually pay off. Specialist Aaron Loy takes us to the court. Osan Air Base holds the 7th Annual Korea Volleyball Academy Summer Camp. Volunteer Coach Senior Master Sergeant Jamie Cummins explains the many benefits of the camp and ultimately the sport. For these young people, I mean, it teaches them teamwork, teaches them the drive to actually do something. It gets them some education, some fitness out there, and potentially the young ladies actually has a really good opportunity to go to school, to go to college. One of two athletes at this camp happens to fit this description. High school graduate Rachel White signs a letter of intent to play for Vernon College in Texas after receiving a volleyball scholarship. I felt pretty great. I was like, yes, I'm finally going somewhere with this and I'm not just playing for nothing. Continue on past high school. That's definitely something special. White looks forward to playing volleyball at the college level, but is focusing on taking it one day at a time. Well, vacations first, but I'm still going to be following a workout plan. And then I'll be dropped off early August to the school, meet the team, get settled in. And then our season will be starting shortly after. A deserved payoff for a hardworking athlete. Specialist Aaron Loy, Osan Air Base, Korea. The camp also featured Cole Tallman, a nationally recognized NCAA and U.S. national team volleyball coach. That was your Around the Peninsula for Thursday, June 26th. To see these stories and others, go to the AFN Pacific website or view them through the AFN Pacific app. For all of us here at AFN, enjoy your evening. President Barack Obama declared June as LGBT Pride Month. Now each June, uh, since I took office, uh, we've gathered to pay tribute to the generations of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Americans. Tammy Baldwin is the first openly lesbian Democratic senator for Wisconsin and has served the nation since 2013. Let's take time to appreciate the contributions they have made to our society. Let's celebrate LGBT Pride Month together.